Tonight, with Leicester champions, our derby also bound for the Premier League, while Birmingham City's relegation fears have suddenly become very real. Welcome to late kickoff. Well, as you can see, they've packed into the late kickoff terraces. Yet again, welcome to our very own supporters crew. If anyone has the answers to the promotion and relegation mysteries, it's a man in the thick of it. Bromsgrove born Burton manager has also played for the Brewers, Derby Blues, and Leicester, Gary Rowett. <laughs> Good to see you, Gary. Naturally, our mascot this week had to be Leicester's finest. Please put your hands together for Philbert the Fox. <laughs> oh, you can help yourself, could you? Well, we start with Leicester then, as they clinched the title last week with this goal at Bolton from Lloyd Dyer, which was a cue then for massive celebrations. And after winning yet again on the road at Huddersfield this weekend with goals from Gary Taylor Fletcher and Wes Morgan, they're now on a club record 99 points for the season. Gary, I mean, it's hard to imagine the season to have gone much better for the Foxes. That's no, been an amazing season, hasn't it? Um, after the last last season, where you know there was a little bit of speculation around that. Nigel might not have been the person to take them forward and I think the owners realised that you know the continuity would be the better thing. He's been brilliant, you know, he's been fantastic, he's experienced, um, you know, he's sorted the team out, brought some excellent players in, some very good foreign players with mm. real quality about them, a little bit of experience and some good young British players as well. And you look at Pearson's record, incidentally, that's two league titles and two playoff campaigns. He's got over a 50% winning ratio in his four years in charge. As a manager yourself, how impressive are those figures? Well, that's astonishing to do it over that period of time, you know, to do it for, for a season maybe, you know, it, that can be done, you know, but to do it four years running and, and to have two promotions within that, um, you know, I think he's done a brilliant, brilliant job and, and, and again, a, a club's benefited from that continuity and having a little bit of faith in the man in charge. And finally, briefly, wholesale changes or stick to what they've got at, at the King Power Stadium? I think they'll stick to what they've got. I think Nigel's alluded to that already. Uh, I think they'll need to add little bits to it to improve again because you know you can't stand still certainly um, but I think they've got the the core um, of a side that could go and, and compete quite well in the Premier League. Well at the other end of the championship table Birmingham fans have been watching in horror as the second City Blues have tumbled down the league Saturday's game against Leeds the latest home defeat extending that winless home run to 17. What's the defending to do here? The crisis could just be growing. Smith, the scorer. Blues nil, leads one. Lees now with a free kick towards Smith on the edge of the area. Infield towards the chance, and it's 2 0. It's 2 in no time at all. It's Pugh with the left foot who drills it home. It's typical of Birmingham City in recent home games. If they can see one, they can see two. McCormack up towards the edge of the penalty area. Has Smith with him? Will he try and create for himself? Oh, and it's an own goal. It's turned in by Caddis, and that is the ultimate low blow for Birmingham City today. They're going to be in the bottom three as things stand. Caddis on the right-hand side <coughs> finds Scott Allen, who switched flanks. <coughs> Good ball forward towards Makeda. Makeda into the penalty area. Oh, good finish from Makeda. Surely too little, too late. Seven and a half to go. Blues one, leads three. And they've got a vital match against Wigan tomorrow. Thanks to goal difference, the Blues need four points from the final two games to be sure of survival. If they recreated their away form at St Andrews, they would have been just outside the playoffs as things stand. As a result, well, the atmosphere on the road couldn't be more different. And Davo, a Blues fanatic, takes his video camera to most, if not all, away games. So if you've never understood the passion of being an away fan, you might after watching this. This man's about to be famous. He doesn't know anything about the championship, but he's going to give us a prediction. Bill Wall against Blues today. What do you reckon? Uh, two need. To who? For Millwall. For Millwall? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic night. I have 
stopped screaming, I haven't stopped biting my nails. Fantastic performance by the boys spent today. Let's have that competing at home. Fantastic, we've done a job, we needed three yeah. points, fantastic three points, could be three points that keeps us up. A bit murky down there, look at that, wouldn't want to swim in there. I don't know where Wigan are in the table, but I'm confident we're going to win today. Today, Debbie? Uh, well, the way we'd go in, seven unbeaten, but too many draws to my liking. It's got to be an away day win again. It's lovely, sun shining again. Always shines on the righteous. Keep right on, those. Probably. <laughs> What do you reckon then today? It'll be a tough, scrappy game. Um, I think Leeds need the result rather than the performance. Uh, I wouldn't mind a 1 1, to be honest. Come on, you blue boys. Kenny's here. What's the score going to be today? That's uh, uh, 4 to 1. <laughs> <laughs> you reckon it's 4 1 blues today? Hideous mother in law, typical mother in law, but she did this for me. So, most, the best thing she did for me in her life. You got a prediction for me today? Yeah, Blues 2 1. Lovely. Yeah. And uh, any good? They're the best. Best in the country. Really? Yeah. Yeah, blues away and good fish and chips, can't beat you. 2-1 yeah. one blues, two one. no problem Dave -o. It's half time at Barnsley and we're winning by three goals to nil, which makes the 24 hour trip from Melbourne in Australia quite worthwhile. It's not when Jesus came back to life, it's that sort of shot. Three and a half half time against away from home. What's going to happen today? You can never predict it. I'll tell you what, there are a few people in the studio feeling a little bit threatened, like these cameramen around here. Dave O's here with us today. Um, it looks like the atmosphere between home games and away games couldn't be more different. You're absolutely right. We've had a great time away from home this season. Uh, great support, some great days, and at home, obviously, it's just been pure misery. Two games left. How fearful are you that you might not even get that win? I'm very fearful of it. I mean, we haven't won at home since, is it October? October um, the 1st. And for any club in any division, that is a really, really poor record. And to be honest, with that sort of record, you probably deserve to go down. Um, maybe that's what we need, rebuild and but then come back Do you really up. mean that, though? I can't see any way out for us at the moment. I mean, we've got Wigan at home tomorrow. I can't see anything from that, to be honest. I can maybe see a point at Derby, but that's, it's dependent on the other results as well, really, then. I just can't see three points coming out of the last two games. Dave, you agree? Yeah, I'm not confident at all. Um, but there's one thing I can say that might save us. There's a man here that we'd like as our next manager. Maybe get him in before tomorrow night. Uh, I'm OK, thanks. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, you're talking about him? You're not his <laughs> agent, are you? Gary Rowett. Oh, get him in. Yeah, yeah obviously. Get him in. Yeah. All right, OK, now, look, I've got to ask you, um, looking at Lee Clark, 
Uh, has it got to the point now with some of the... I mean, like, you know, there are a lot of fans who are questioning his, 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 his team selection. He's bringing back Scott Allen after eight months. Hayden Mullins has been recalled as well, which hasn't gone down particularly well with Notts County fans. Is it a case of not being able to see the woods from the trees when you're under so much intense pressure? Yeah, I think, I mean, firstly, it's very difficult to judge someone unless you, you, you know, you stood in their shoes and, and, and you know what's behind, um, you know, the structure of the club. But I think, like you say, you know, by changing the team a lot, um, Sometimes it's desperation to try to do that, to try and try to find the winning formula. Sometimes the more you change it, the further away from um, you know what you're looking for. Yeah, is it happens. like a love final throw the dice? Almost, uh, I think it is, and I think the problem you get sometimes the more you change it, the more the players think. Are we, are we sure really of what our best team is and the more uncertainty that creates and yeah. um, there's one thing you need with the last two games is just a little bit of stability a little bit of trust in the players and just hope they can somehow get the club over the line because it's, it's, it's an amazing club you know anyone who's been involved in it it's a terrific club yeah. huge club could be um, you know whether it will be you know, in the next few years, you know, we'll wait to be seen. Yeah, fingers crossed that they can do it. So to Derby then, and a semi-final place coming up in the playoffs. Uh, they uh, took on Watford this weekend, and it was a good win. Then back amongst the goals are Derby, and in a big way, five consecutive wins. They actually went behind, but a Jeff Hendricks strike and an equaliser meant that they were level at half-time. Three second-half goals then followed, first from Craig Forsyth, then this one from Chris Martin. Another then from Hendrick clinched a 4-1 home win. I mean, they mean business at the minute. They do, yeah. They've, they've got a really good balance at the moment. They're not conceding a lot of goals. They pass the ball really, really well through midfield. I think that's their big strength, Derby. Uh, you know, you look at a lot of the goals come from the midfield trio, if you like. Uh, and they've got lots of really good attacking options. And, and with a manager uh, in Steve, with, with the experience of being in these situations before, you know, I'm sure they're going to be really, really positive in these playoff games. Incidentally, that win means they've equaled the club's record points total. Few would have predicted that could happen at the start of the season. Since the American owners have restructured the management on and off the pitch, Derby have been the surprise package of the campaign and potentially three games away from Wembley. So how have they done it? Natalie Jackson has been finding out. We're walking at one of the highest points in Derbyshire today um, to talk about the rise of the Rams, which seems appropriate. It's quite a steep climb, isn't it? Yeah. It is, it is. Sam Rush and John Vickers are the two men behind what Steve McLaren calls the innocent climb. It's been a very good season and I think all those that have contributed deserve huge credit, particularly Steve and the players who've been magnificent. They run Derby County, and are the face of the American owners. Spectacular view. It's incredible, isn't it? I'm not sure whether this weather's getting better or worse. <laughs> Mamtor is one of the most dramatic viewpoints in the Peak District. Like the Rams this season, a wonder of the East Midlands. But how have they steered Derby up the table, and will they and us reach the top. It's no fluke that the fans have been more engaged. You've done a lot of work to try and um, talk to the fan base again, haven't you? The gates were, were dropping and I mean, I think we had, uh, we had one bit scare where we thought we might even drop below 20,000 for a Tuesday night game. Um, we're nearly at the top. Um, how will it feel if Derby reach the top and gets that Premier League in the playoffs? Absolutely huge for football clubs, for the city of Derby and, and, and for the county of Derbyshire. You know, when you watch a game from afar, you think you know, it's all about the team on the pitch, which of course it is to a large extent. But I think this season more than anything in the Championship has highlighted those clubs that have got issues off the pitch, they can't perform on the pitch. No. So if you can get it sorted on the pitch, then you give yourself the best possible chance. Do you feel quite protective over, over the owners? Unlike a lot of owners of, of football clubs up and down the country, they've, they've, not, they've not run away when, when, when things weren't going well or, uh, or, or they, were, you know, they were getting the brick bats and I think they deserve a, a huge amount of credit. To dry out, we headed back down to discuss the impact of McLaren and the key players. <laughs> Derby have consistently been in the top four since November. Only champions Leicester have scored more goals this season. Oh, 
Five very difficult and very disappointing years, both on and off the pitch. And I think the owners shared the view that something need to get, something needed to give, something needed to change. And and obviously they they, they brought Sam in to uh, to be effectively the catalyst for that change. Sam looked after the football and made the change last September. And and I obviously looked at the other areas of business and and we effected some changes there. And. But at the championship level, the the establishment of relationships with, with, with Premier League clubs is key and the quality of the loans I think has, has, has been huge and, and, and people like Andre and Patrick and George I think have made a huge difference to the, to the team. But now we're looking to move forward and really to be you know, one of the elite clubs in English football again. They're on their way and so were we. After a great day undeterred by the wet and the rain and if this bedraggled lot can reach the top, Surely Tarby can. Whose idea was this left? <laughs> I'll play with the producer. <laughs> so if you are um, celebrating at the end of May, when you come back up here with us, hopefully in, in better weather. Only if you check the weather forecast before. <laughs> yeah, in the summer. <laughs> I thought it was the summer. <laughs> yeah, so did I. <laughs> Thanks to Natalie Jackson for that report. Nice insight as to what goes on in the boardroom. I mean, Danny, you're, you're a big Derby County fan. Um, John Vickers and uh, Sam Rush both involved as chief exec and CEO at the club, uh, and they went to the pubs locally to speak to the fans. What did you make of that move? Fantastic. Very approachable, guys. Very brave to get out there front and centre in front of pubs full of Derby fans who have a pint. And I think it says a lot about them. You've secured third place now, and clearly you are the team not to face in the playoffs now. No, we're not, you know, nobody frightens us. We can beat everybody, uh, we're on form, we're scoring goals for fun. Um, no way why we shouldn't get promoted. Jack, how confident are you then of getting through the playoffs? I'm pretty confident because the way we're scoring goals for fun and mm. defensively we're quite solid at the back. And it's not just the amount of goals we're scoring, it's the way we're playing before we're scoring the goals and the amount of opportunity we're having to score even more goals. Like Watford at the weekend, we scored four, but it could have either been seven or eight. Yeah. OK, for now, thanks very much. And, of course, all the very best for the playoffs. Well, Nottingham Forest season, meanwhile, the storyline has seen more twists and turns than a TV soap opera. A latest piece, of course, is that they were in the playoff places not that long ago, but it is now out of reach. The weekend defeat at Bournemouth was the final nail in the coffin. This was the consolation goal, then, from Greg Halford. They were two down by then. Gary, what a disappointment, the, the way their season has just fallen flat. Well, I think it's been a very, very strange end to the season for Forrest, hasn't it? Um, to appoint a manager in, in Stuart Pearce, which I'm sure would be a very good appointment, but to have done it and then not to, for Stuart to take the reins, um, obviously he have his own reasons for that, but I think that must have created some real instability amongst the players, the current staff there, but no, they're not going to necessarily be in charge or maybe in the same jobs next season. Mm. Um, and I don't think that's been a particularly good move, really, for the club. All right, well, staying in the city, Notts County, famous for one recent great escape, may well be staging another. <laughs> well, Bottom with just 31 points a few weeks back, Sean Derry's men have won six from the last eight games. The latest against Swindon at the weekend, goals from Alan Sheehan early in the first half, and then Callum McGregor on 90 minutes uh, won it for them. It's been a sensational effort from Sean Derry's men. It has, yeah, when he got the job. I don't think there'd have been too many people that would have envied him too much because it looked a very, very difficult task. Um, you know, another, another big club that really needs to rekindle the past a little bit. But mm. this, I think they started quite poorly, didn't they? I think they lost something like five out of the first seven games and you just looked at them and they looked as though they are going to be dead and buried. But he's retained his belief. He's, he, he's kept positive. Mm. Um, some of the players, he's got them back playing really, really well. Uh, Jamal Campbell Rice has been a, a massive, yeah. uh, a massive player. Has been amongst yeah. Goals. Jimmy Spencer again. Um, some of those players have been been really, really good for them in these last six games, and it just shows you once you can create that little bit of momentum, you know, a little bit of belief in the fans, a little bit of belief in the players, and, and they've really kind of kept on that wave. They only need to draw at Oldham to secure their safety, uh, which has been a terrific turnaround. It just goes to show what happens if you stick by your manager. 
Absolutely, yeah, and I hope that you know the, the, the fight that they've shown and the commitment that they've shown. I hope that they, they get it. And I think what 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 you would say is if Sean Derry can get through this season and keep Notts County in the division, then you know as a young manager that'll be an absolutely massive learning curve for him to take forward. And as season. you know, because you've only recently become a football league manager yourself, is that that's the last thing you want on your CV in your first job is relegation against your name? Well, that's it. Your career's over in management. That's that's simple. You know, you, you take a job. It's your first job. You've got to make it a success. Nine times out of ten first time managers who don't succeed you know don't come back into the game and I think that's a it's a harsh situation mm. but you know everybody knows it and everyone's got to make the best of that first opportunity well elsewhere in league one Shrewsbury's defeat against Peterborough doomed them to relegation they took the lead after six minutes with a John Taylor goal before Tom Bradshaw second but the Shrews back in it only for a fourth Peterborough goal to clinch the three points and just listen how how sad does the commentator Stuart Dunn sound here the chance for Croy for a fourth and he has it's 4-2 to Peter Dreher. Town's relegation is most certainly confirmed now. It's goodbye Wolves. Hello Dagenham. Goodbye Sheffield United. Hello Mansfield. She's been relegated at Greenhouse Meadow. She's been two Peter for four. Sad day then for the Shrewsbury faithful. We've got a family of Shrews here in the studio, uh, including Kian. Kian, great to have you in. Uh, How did you. it feel then after what um, on Saturday? Well, um, it was a struggle, wasn't it? Yeah. It's been goals. Has that been the one major problem uh, for you this season? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, look. Good luck with, of course, next season in League Two. Nigel, what happens now in the summer? Is it all about wholesale changes? Is it about maybe giving Mike Jackson a second bite of the cherry? Well, in his interview after the match, he was saying that he doesn't know who's going to take over, but the way he was talking, as though he sort of knows he's going to be there. Um, big wholesale changes, commitment he was talking about, and too many loan players, 20 this season. You're not going to get anywhere with that. Some of them have been OK, some of them, you know, mediocre, but... He just feared shades of Graham Turner at Hereford mm. with, with all the lone players. I just hope it doesn't follow the same suit next season. Hope you bounce back soon. And me. <laughs> so to Walsall, a disappointing result really. It already relegated Stevenage at the weekend. These are the Walsall goals then from fullback Mal Benning. That put the sides level. Uh, Craig Westcar put them ahead before two goals from already relegated Stevenage sent the Saddlers home unhappy. Their season disintegrated in the final third, didn't it? Yeah, but you'd have to ask the, the question why. I think first and foremost, you know, with a budget that I would imagine they've got there, Dean Smith's done a terrific job over two seasons now. Um, you know, they've got a lot of players there that have not, not done brilliantly well at like, League Two level, and they've brought them in and they've got the best out of them. They play terrific football, some would argue, as well as any team plays in League One. Mm. Uh, and you maybe think that, you know, it's just that lack of funds that stops them getting over the line or stops them breaking into those playoffs. But I think they should be really positive about the season they've had. And I suppose for the final game, Dean Smith in a final push, isn't it, to get into the top ten at the very least? They're two points off it. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what he'll be saying to the players, you know, that'll be a good achievement for mm. them to build. Again, I think that you know if Walsall stay in Division One, I know that sometimes might sound a little bit of lack of ambition from outside no. the club. But if they stay in League One, I think that's a yeah. success. And anything better than that, then that's brilliant. For and them. it just goes to show the high standards they've set for themselves in recent seasons. Now there was a local affair at Six Fields as Coventry and Wolves played out a West Midlands derby. Through the centre, Edwards couldn't get it, but it's headed away. Only to Dicko, and now Sacco from the left puts a ball in Edwards. Oh, what a hot streak Dave Edwards has been on to help Usher Wolves to promotion, and he's still adding to it. Free kick from Marshall, and this is an equaliser by Delfonso. With a glancing finish from right in front of the goalkeeper, swung in from the left-hand side, and just a flick off the forehead makes it 1-1. William and Liam are here, they're both Coventry City fans. Uh, in the end of, at the end of it, other results meant that you were safe anyway, but job done as far as Stephen Presley is concerned, isn't it? Yeah, it was a huge sense of relief for me personally by saying that a few weeks back since our last away win at Crewe on March of 29th, we've looked more lacklustre and mm. we haven't looked very good and I was starting to fear relegation was coming due to the other results as they like not County on the great escape but ever since the transfer window when we lost to Leon Clark we were looking good yeah before then looking for the playoffs and we even with the 10 point deduction yeah we were looking good for the playoffs yeah but after he left it seemed like he was pushing Callum Wilson up front to 
basically go on front on his own. Yeah. And then ever since then, the goals have dried up and so have the points, really. But it's a huge sense of relief and full credit to Presley and his players. Definitely. Uh, incidentally, well done to Callum Wilson getting to the PFA yeah, absolutely, team, of the, absolutely. team of, the, of the year for that division. Five of them. In, the, in, that, in that 11 for Wolves. Yeah, and it could have been more, really. I mean, there's a few players there that didn't get in. Goldborn, Stearman, you know, mm. quality players throughout the team this season. You can't knock them to a man. And Wolves eyeing the 101-point record in that division. Well, Port Vale played on Friday night, of course, and lost at home to Sheffield United. And vale will be happy with a comfortable mid-table finish. Gary, what do you think? Yeah, I think they will. Um, you know, having come up last season, um, you know, you always worry that they're going to be able to mix it in that division and stay in there. And that's the first and foremost of priority, I'm sure, this season for Mickey. Um, I think what they've done is excellent. You know, they've been in and around the top ten, pushing the top half of the, the table. Mm. Little bit of instability again at that club, I think, just in terms. Of, I think Mick, you know, I've read a little Question bit about over his, over his contract, yeah. whatnot, um, which I'm sure haven't, hasn't helped. Okay. Um, but I think they've done really, really well again. Well, we're going to continue to monitor your suggestions for Midlands Manager of the Year, by the way. And on our last late kickoff, we'll be telling you who we've selected based on what you tell us. So do get tweeting. A reminder of our Twitter handle, at LKO Mids, is how to get in touch with us. And so to League Two, then, and no doubt who that Midlands Team of the Year are in this division, not just because he's with me, but Burton Albion are in the playoffs, of course. That place was cemented a while ago. Their next game is against South End. Now that you're in the playoffs, does the experience of being in there 12 months ago help, Gary? I think it does. I think it, um, you know, will have learned from last season. Obviously, we had a tough playoff game against Bradford last year, which I think most teams would have wanted to avoid. Uh, I think we'll be stronger for that this year. We've got five or six players who were part of that team, and we've got another five or six who uh, have experienced, you know, success in, in, in playoffs and promotion teams mm. also. I think it's one thing, you know, we've, we, we'll have learned from various ways of, of approaching the games, various tactics, and I think, yes, we're certainly we're in a better position than we were last season. Good luck with that, by the way. Thank you. Let's round up uh, the rest of League Two with the goals from Cheltenham and Mansfield. Mansfield beaten at home to Torquay. Uh, Matt Reid scoring this consolation. Torquay still relegated after that result, and a dismal day for Cheltenham, beaten by these two Rochdale goals. I think for both of them, safety assured by... Uh, well, by a long way, really, but a bit of disappointment for, in the process, too. For Cheltenham? Yeah, or well, yeah, maybe for Mansfield as well. Well, I think both teams, you know, slightly different seasons. Mansfield started the season very, very well, mm. and, and there was a lot of talk of them maybe getting Making promotion again, and I yeah. think maybe they all got a little bit carried away with that. Cheltenham were polar opposites, really, after two good seasons where they made the playoffs. Started very poorly. Um, and, and sometimes it's very hard to get out of that. I think they kicked on a little bit and then mm. I think Mark showed his frustration probably five or six weeks ago when he said, I just want the season to be over. Yeah. Uh, and I think the players have probably took him literally with that one. But, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, there'll be a relief when the final whistle goes and yeah. I'm sure he'll be looking forward to next season. OK, well, that's it from us. Congratulations to Telford, promoted from the Conference North as champions, and to Hereford, who we featured on late kickoff, you may remember, a few weeks back. They survived off the pitch, and on the pitch this weekend, they maintained their status on goal difference alone, thanks to an 88-minute strike. Talk about cutting it fine. Commiserations to Tamworth. They were relegated from the National Conference. OK, that's it. My thanks to Gary and to our supporters' crew. <laughs> If you could please do the honours, this is how you can get hold of us on Twitter at LKO Mids or via Facebook and tell us if you'd like to join us in the studio. Uh, and if you want to relive tonight's magic, we're on the iPlayer all week. We're back at the same time next week, but from all of us, good night.